Hello, I'm Mark, Dr. Fred Frizzle here, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about minerals in plants. Okay, so minerals in plants are very important for the actual for the actual day-to-day -day functioning of that particular plant. And we have a number of different minerals, so start off with nitrates. So what are nitrates used for? Well, they're used for cell growth and amino acid production. Okay, so, so I don't want to just write you out a list of different uh, different minerals and, and tell you what they're used for because I want to go into a little bit more detail on that because I want to explain to you sort of the context of this and where it actually fits in with biology because I know I appreciate you have to just learn a list but it's so much more interesting if we actually go into a bit more detail and, and actually realise where these are used. So, so nitrates for cell growth and amino acid production. Now I don't know if you know but amino acids are the monomers or subunits that go that, that, jo that join together by peptide bonds in order to make something called a protein. Now proteins make up loads of things like your antibodies which help fight infection in your body to your um, the, like substances like keratin which are in the skin and um, there's loads of different different types of proteins um, and they're very important for the function. E even our enzymes which are like globular proteins for example are used in like photosynthesis and respiration stuff so um, I'll write up the title there, plant minerals so it's, it's a very it's a very exciting thing and I don't want you to lose sight of that although you're revising just this list of facts I want you to appreciate the greater context of where this is used. Okay, and cell growth, which is obviously very important, um, like in order for, for the plant to grow and develop and compete with other plants in a particular area, it's going to need to grow. Um, okay, so the next one is phosphates. So where are phosphates used? Well, they're used in cell membrane production. The so cell membrane production. And they're also used in making DNA. Now, obviously, making DNA is going to require energy. Now, I don't know if you come across this, but phosphate groups can be removed from a molecule known as ATP, which you probably know that ATP is required for active processes. Active processes meaning requiring the use of ATP. Um, for example, active transport is an example of an active process. Um, but how this ATP actually releases this energy is by the removal of one of its phosphate groups. ATP, I don't know if you know this, but it stands for adenosine triphosphate. Triphosphate implies that there's three phosphate groups on the molecule. Um, every time one of these phosphate groups is removed, it releases energy. Um, so that's how it assists in making DNA, because it actually releases this energy in order to, in order to form the, the um, polynucleotide of DNA. Um, now, I might sound like a fancy word polynucleotide, but poly means a lot, and nucleotide are just the subunits of DNA. Okay, so we know they're also used in cell membrane production. You probably in GCC haven't come across the term phospholipid bilayer, but, but essentially that's not, t not too scary, it's just how the membrane's formed. So, so you've got a list, you've got a list, you've got a, a row of, of circles here which represent um, something known as hydrophilic heads. Hydrophilic means water-loving heads. Okay, And they've got tails that go inside the cell membrane and they're hydrophobic. A phobia of something means you don't like it. So these, these don't like water. They're essentially hiding in the cell membrane. So this is what our cell membrane actually looks like. In GCC you say you'll have learned that it's just that. And then you've got your nucleus here and cytoplasm here. But it's actually this. This is sort of a magnified version of that. So if I draw you that a magnified Thing. That's essentially what it looks like. So, so phosphates are just used in this phospholipid bilayer. Um, actually, it should be quite self-explanatory because the term phospholipid bilayer implies that it's got phosphate in it by the name phospholipid. Because um, these molecules, these individual molecules made up of the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails, um, are actually phospholipid molecules. Um, so that's essentially where that comes from. You don't need to know that in too much detail. Um, and deficiency of this is going to cause um, poor root growth and purple leaves. Okay, so so it's going to cause purple leaves and poor root growth. And, and potassium um, is for enzymes for photosynthesis and stuff. So I write potassium. So potassium. So that's going to be for enzymes. 
which are globular proteins. You don't need to know about that, but they're soluble and they can move around anywhere basically. They're used in photosynthesis and in respiration as particular types of enzymes. There's also coenzymes that assist the function of enzymes by providing a means for which to transfer hydrogen or some other element. Um, you've also got magnesium. Now magnesium is used for producing chlorophyll. Um, now chlorophyll, I don't know if you've heard of this, but I'll write it down anyway. Magnesium for chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Okay, so chlorophyll is the green pigment found in plants' leaves. That the green pig pigment which absorbs the actual photons of light, which are just basically bits of light, if you like, because light is essentially travelled in particular packets known as photons. We don't really need to know that. Um, but the point is that these, that chlorophyll is this green pigment that absorbs this this light in order to convert it into um, into the materials that the plant needs by the overall reaction of photosynthesis. So you may be thinking, well, what is the overall reaction of photosynthesis? Well, we've got our six waters. No, no, this is also known as the devil's equation, because you end up with loads and loads of sixes. Um, that, that's just because equations need to be balanced. You've probably done this in chemistry. You need to put particular, whatever whatever number of moles of this particular um, compound you have, you need to make sure it's balanced with the other side. Okay, so what do plants need? Well, they need water, and they also take in uh, carbon dioxide, which is breathed out by us as humans and other animals, um, and they convert that into six oxygen and... Um, C6H12O6 you're probably thinking what on earth is that that's just basically glucose you don't really need to know it's, it's that I, I just wrote that out there just because we're writing out the um, the, the actual like, molecular um, atoms which make up these particular molecules and um, I thought I might as well write it in that form in its molecular form okay so I'll just write under here glucose because glucose and that are the same thing okay so that's the overall reaction of photosynthesis and that, that's pretty much all the plant minerals you need to know. So hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Goodbye.